Hello, everyone, and welcome to my talk about what you need to know about ScyllaDB 5.0. Uh, my name is Ave Kiviti. I'm the uh, CTO uh, of uh, ScyllaDB and also a maintainer, or maintainer of the project. And I have past experience with uh, Linux kernel based virtual machine. So, uh, what's new in ScyllaDB 5.0? Uh, I've categorized into to four uh, different topics. Uh, although uh, many of those uh, features will fall into uh, several of these categories, but you have to uh, pick your partition key. Uh, so let's start with the performance because that's, that's the one thing everyone loves. Uh, so one thing we did is remove the, the penalty from large partitions. So um, in the past when you, uh, had a large partition, you might have seen penalties with accessing the partition in the middle or uh, scanning this uh, large partition. And over the years, we've removed many of the penalties, but now uh, we think we've removed uh, all of them. And this is done with the uh, SS table index caching. And this is the uh, adaptive caching. So the parts of the index uh, that are in heavy use will be uh, cached and the parts of the index that are not in heavy use uh, will be kept on disk and this will economize the use of uh, memory uh, and the parts of the data that are in frequent use will be heavily cached and you will get uh, immediate access to uh, the data. Uh, another area that we've improved is the reverse queries. Now, this is an area that you might not have noticed at all that there is a problem. Uh, many users uh, do not do reverse queries at all. Or if you do reverse queries with small partitions, then uh, you might not, not, not notice a problem. Uh, but in the combination of reverse queries and uh, a large partition, uh, we did have uh, uh, quadratic uh, complexity, which translated to very long query times when the partitions were large. So you can see how uh, the previous uh, implementation in Scylla 4.5 uh, showed this quadratic complexity that moreover ended in failure at around the 100 megabytes, uh, whereas uh, uh, Scylla 5.0 uh, has uh, um, uh, the performance of a reverse queries only trails slightly behind the performance of uh, forward queries uh, and uh, doesn't have any limitation in terms of uh, partition size. Also, it's nice to see that uh, we can query 100 megabytes in uh, half a second. So that's 200 megabytes per second for just one core. And of course, you multiply that by the number of cores we have. And you see the immense bandwidth that the SailorDB can provide. Um, so next, we've done a, a rework of our IO scheduler. And this is uh, in two parts. One In one part, we modeled how modern uh, solid state disks behave. Uh, so in uh, this chart shows how uh, a disk behaves at different combinations of um, uh, sequential writes and random reads. And we've modeled every point on the chart. We've te run the test through a variety of disks. And for every disk, we measured um, the latency that you can uh, expect. Uh, and uh, in this, uh, Cyan color, uh, you have the low latencies when the combination of uh, uh, read IOPS and write throughput uh, is low enough to support uh, uh, fast queries. And in uh, purple, uh, you are getting bad 95th percentile. Uh, and so the second part of this work is to adjust the IOS scheduler so that it knows exactly in which area of the chart uh, it is currently operating it and it steers the workload away from uh, the purple part and into the uh, cyan part. And so it uh, keeps the latencies low, uh, it keeps the disk running at the uh, places where it's happy. Uh, and we have a, a nice benchmark that we performed recently on a petabyte uh, scale uh, data set. Uh, and uh, I'm pretty happy to be able to say that at 5 million operations per second, uh, we, we get uh, 2 milliseconds, uh, a 99th percentile latency. And it did deteriorates somewhat when you go to 6 million operations per second. I don't think there are uh, 
many people that, who work on databases that uh, can say that. Uh, I'm, I'm very satisfied with it. Uh, so next, let's move on to uh, new features. Um, so the headline feature uh, of Scylla 5.0 is the Raft, uh, where we use the Raft to manage uh, topology and schema. And in 5.0, we only have the beginning of that, but we plan to uh, base many new features of uh, Scylla DB on top of Raft. Um, in uh, in 5.0, we have um, the schema and topology managed by Raft. This is uh, optional because it is so new. So it defaults to the old eventual consistency model, but you can select uh, the new strongly consistent raft model. And this uh, improves uh, the ability of the system to guarantee that uh, the schema will be consistent and that uh, topology operations uh, will, will be reconciled. Uh, and we will build on this to uh, support the strongly consistent tables uh, strongly consistent uh, materialized views and indexes, and uh, uh, data distribution features such as tablets, which will uh, improve the elasticity of the system and enable better op operation of uh, uh, large and small tables coexisting with, with each other and remove a lot of the um, problems of the current uh, vNode model. Um, another feature we've worked on is the improving the out of memory uh, resistance. So um, SILADB uh, uh, delivers uh, very fast performance uh, in part by supporting a very high concurrency so that uh, it can exploit uh, the many cores, many nodes, and uh, the very fast uh, disks that uh, are backing the, the nodes today. Uh, but the price for high concurrency is that uh, you, you have higher memory consumption. Uh, and the memory consumption is hard to predict because uh, you cannot tell in advance the size of the data that you are reading. You might be reading 100 bytes or you might be reading 10 megabytes. Uh, and so we've had to uh, improve uh, and make more accurate the way that we track memory consumption in order to start restricting concurrency uh, before we run out of memory. So uh, uh, SILA 5.0 will be a lot more resilient uh, in different workloads with high concurrency. So let's move on to uh, quality of life. So those are things that make your uh, life easier as an operator and developer of a SILA DB database. Um, so uh, let's start with uh, a time window compaction strategy tables. So in the past, you've had to make a choice, which is uh, uh, artificially bucketing your data in order to fit within a, a time window. Uh, and this means that you have to spend more effort on modeling your data. And if you make a mistake, those mistakes are quite hard to correct. Uh, and today, in part because of our improved support for large partitions, but also improvements to uh, time window compaction strategy itself, uh, you no longer need to do this artificial bucketing. Uh, each time series can be one huge partition uh, that can span as many time windows as it needs to. And CLDB will adapt and will handle uh, uh, the data, even though it spills through multiple time windows. Uh, so that's a simplification for uh, data series uh, users, time series users. Um, next, uh, repair-based uh, node operations. So that's uh, a little bit of a mouthful. So node operations are um, uh, bootstrapping a new node, decommissioning a node, uh, rebuilding a node that has uh, lost its data and, and similar. Um, so, in the past, those operations were based on streaming, moving data from one node to another, uh, but we've changed them to be based on the repair. Uh, and the idea behind that is that uh, although repair is more complex and more stressful for the database, uh, it is uh, less stressful for the operators because you can just resume it uh, if there is a, uh, if it failed and you need to uh, continue it. You don't have to start from scratch. Uh, it ensures consistency of the data. Uh, it simplifies the operation because you no longer need uh, to run repair at 
specified point uh, and uh, it's unified so that there is uh, less code involved in, in uh, these operations and so less ways for them to fail. Uh, another mouthful is the repair-based Thompson garbage collection. And uh, uh, you might be familiar with the fact that uh, you must run repair at intervals that are more frequent than uh, um, uh, Thumbstone GC seconds, a parameter that is configured by default uh, 10 days. And this is uh, quite stressful because if you do not manage to complete repair within that period, then you're at risk of uh, data resurrection and nobody wants uh, deleted data to be uh, resurrected. So with the uh, repair-based Thompson garbage collection, instead of um, having to complete repairs within uh, an arbitrary time period, and now the database tracks whether you've completed repair and it will um, purge tombstones that are um, older than the last repair and it will keep tombstones that are uh, newer than uh, uh, the last repair. And with that, you have two benefits. So the first, of course, is that uh, there is no risk of uh, uh, data resurrection, even if your repairs lag behind, maybe a repair failed, maybe you forgot to run a repair. Uh, whatever the reason, if uh, you lag behind your repairs, uh, your data is safe. Of course, it's not recommended to lag. There is a, a performance penalty with that. But that also brings us to the second advantage of uh, repair-based Thompson garbage collection. Uh, and that is uh, if you do manage repair on schedule or even ahead of schedule, then CLADB will purge uh, more tombstones than it would otherwise. And that uh, uh, will reclaim space and will improve performance. So tombstones, as uh, we know, can degrade performance. And by purging them earlier, uh, we, we regain some of that performance loss. Uh, next, we'll talk about uh, changes around the ecosystem uh, of uh, ScyllaDB. Uh, so we'll start, of course, with the Kubernetes. So a lot of improvements have been brought to the uh, operator uh, around performance, not only of uh, ScyllaDB running within Kubernetes, but also of the operator itself. So uh, it will respond to your commands uh, more quickly. Uh, we've had some uh, stability improvements, uh, and also we've uh, improved the security around the operator. Um, next, uh, a, a Rust driver. So this is the newest driver in the, in the Rust in the StellarDB family, and uh, the first driver that uh, StellarDB uh, we wrote by ourselves. And it's already uh, the fastest driver um, out there. And we have a plan to uh, rebase some of the other drivers on, on top of the Rust driver because it is such a modern and clean and safe and fast code base. Uh, so this is a, a very good uh, development. Um, another new feature is uh, WebAssembly. Uh, so WebAssembly is a new way to uh, uh, perform computations uh, across the security boundaries. So in this case, you're moving a function from uh, the user domain, from your domain into the database. And uh, WebAssembly allows uh, the database to execute a function uh, with safety and also with the great performance. Uh, and this is available in experimental mode now. Uh, you can provide uh, a WebAssembly function uh, as the raw WebAssembly code that's seen in this slide, but also as uh, C or uh, Rust code. Uh, so there's many options, and it's uh, quite an exciting feature. Uh, next is the uh, ARM V8 support. Uh, so uh, CLDB now runs on ARM machines. It can run on your uh, M1 uh, Mac. Uh, in in uh, Docker, and it can run on uh, Amazon um, i4 class uh, instances, which are powered by Graviton 2. Uh, so you get a better price performance and uh, uh, very high density uh, nodes with a very large amounts of storage uh, per uh, per dollar and uh, per vCPU. So these are great if you have uh, uh, workloads that are 
uh, storage bound and not uh, CPU bound. Uh, and that's it. Um, thanks a lot. Uh, stay around for uh, more in-depth talks as well as lightning talks uh, about uh, CLDB 5.0 and beyond. Uh, enjoy the summit.